right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And you know what my you know what my favorite part of vlog day is? I love it when people watch the vlog and then they post pictures of themselves watching the vlog on social media. Every Thursday, I get uh, mentioned or tagged in a couple photos here and there of people enjoying the vlog. And nothing, literally nothing, well, some things, but nothing warms my heart like seeing someone enjoy something that you have created. If you're one of these people, go ahead, post a picture on Instagram or Facebook or wherever of you watching the vlog, hashtag it vlog day, and uh, you know, that will, that, will, that will make me happy. In fact, that would actually make a really good giveaway. I'm gonna try to figure out how to, how to get that into a giveaway at the end of this video. I'm, I'm gonna think a little bit. I do have some stuff to give away. We're gonna think about how to do a giveaway uh, if you take a picture and post it on social media, watching the vlog. I just think that's cool, but no matter. It's not about that. What it's about is the vlog, and I'm here, and I got my vlog notes, and I'm ready to sit down and do some freaking vlogging. So, first thing on the agenda, 360p. A lot of people jump on the vlog early, or any of my normal weekly review videos, and there's inevitably comments on there where people say, Oh, why is it only 360p? Bleh, that's bad. That's bleh, bleh, bleh. I try my best to upload videos ahead of time, at least a day early, so that YouTube has time to process it. So when I go to publish it, it's already in HD. Unfortunately, sometimes on Mondays, that's the day I fall behind, and sometimes on vlog day, in fact, most of the time on vlog day, I'm staying up late at night editing and then I have to leave my computer on all night to save the file, and then I start uploading it in the morning, and then as soon as it's uploaded, I'll publish it. So YouTube really hasn't had time to process it yet. And this isn't just for my videos, this is for any videos all over the internet. If you see someone's brand new video, pardon me, what's in the news, Robin, and it's only in 360p, it's because YouTube is still processing it. So either watch it in 360p, which I get it, it's not It's not as cool, I mean, honestly, or just wait a minute, maybe 10 or 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, I don't know, sometimes YouTube takes forever, but just wait a little bit and YouTube will eventually process it, and yes, you can watch it in HD. Uh, people have been getting me some information on that Altus tank, and like I said, there's already a couple reviews for it out there. Uh, I believe it to be tungsten. People are saying it's it's tungsten. That coil is tungsten. Where is my tungsten coil? People are saying that the coil is ceramic coated tungsten. Interesting, right? I don't know the properties of tungsten. I have literally been giving this tank so much attention recently, like trying to really fine tune the vape. I've been getting uh, information on how to make it work with temp control. Evidently it works better on temp control with a DNA 200 because there's already uh, profiles out there that you can download and just upload right to your DNA 200 using the eScribe software, which makes it much easier for temp control. Um, Origin Fape actually put me in contact with the creator of the tank, and I was able to exchange uh, one email with him so far. Uh, he emailed me, and he's like, hey, I'm happy to explain anything about the the questions about the tank that you might have. And so I had some questions for him and just, you know, trying to get some clarification on things, fired that off, waiting to hear back. So there's a little bit of a back and forth. And as a general rule, I try not to bother the creators of devices or mods. Unless I have a really serious issue with something, then I don't generally reach out because as an average consumer, and that's the kind of the point of view I wanna take here, as an average consumer, the average consumer is not gonna have access to just email the creator of a tank and be like, hey, what about this, this, and this? And so if the average consumer can't do it, then I don't wanna be able to do that. I wanna have the experience of someone who just got this tank, has the information that's available to use to use it. You know what I mean? So I kind of have this, this weird thing in my head where I don't wanna email the creators of the devices or the tanks or whatever on a regular basis, um, I wanna have like a more 
consumer based point of view if that makes any sense at all but i've still been using it we're still digging into it uh i'm gonna just go bananas with this tank i mean i'm not going fill status on you i'm not gonna have charts and graphs and you know oscilloscopes i think he uses an oscilloscope uh, using oscilloscopes or something like that but i just find this tank very very fascinating it's one of the few things you know in the last year that i've actually found really really fascinating you know what i mean you get a new mod and you're like oh it's 150 watt tc mod two eighteen six fifties. that's cool Oh, it's a tank, and you can build a single coil. Oh, you can build a dual coil. Oh, it's a top fill, and like that's cool. N nothing gets me really super excited. Like I still have fun, absolutely, with vaping and new toys and fiddling and stuff like that, and having a really good vape experience. But when this came out, I was just like mesmerized. I'm like, this is completely different than the way I've been vaping for years, and I I'm just fascinated by it so i'm trying to learn a lot about it uh i'm a i did a couple re-wicks i've been leaving my wicks really long uh even though the youtube comments have been telling me to cut it shorter i don't know i've just been experimenting you know what i mean i'm trying to get the most out of this tank that i can and that's that's what it is and that rant was way too long but yeah more information about this to come soon i also want to talk real quick about the wood skins from woodbooks.com so there was just a whole lot of miscommunication going on there between me and the wood books people um evidently yes they do have two different skins for the RX200 Relo and the DNA200 Relo, but on their website, it's lumped into one. And so when I went to the website, I just said Relo, and they s sent me the DNA200 skin. There are two skins, but if you go to their website, it appears as though there is one skin for both mod, meaning that the RX200 and the DNA200 don't get separate skins. And I'm like, well, that kind of makes sense. I mean, they're gonna be the same fit and finish, maybe except for the screen, they're different. There's two different skins. And so they are going to send me the actual RX200 skin to put on this RX200 hundred device and then I can report back in a later vlog how the fit and finish is and I'm not going to do a whole nother video of applying it and this that and the other I'm just going to get it and apply it and and show you guys and everybody and how the fit and finish is and when I have the correct skin for the correct mod right and so now that I know that I'm going to be tearing this skin off of here and putting on a new one I decided I wanted to try some science and people were wondering about juice on the uh on the skin and this is going to lead into what i've been vaping and one of the things that i've been vaping is the relo with uh this is the arctic v8 mini on here filled with glacier banana the arctic v8 mini even though it's a tiny tank it's just become one of my favorite sub ohm tanks i just really really like it i plan on doing a review for this very very soon i'm going to do the arctic v8 full size and the arctic v8 mini in the same video because it's basically the same tank except the mini you guessed it, is smaller in stature. It's just been a really, really good vape. I love the airflow on it. It's small, so I get really nice flavor. I like it. I've been having a great time with it. And you will never know how much a tank truly spits back into your mouth until you vaped it with a menthol juice. Because menthol hits you and you know it. It's not like, oh, I got a little whisper of a little spray of flavor. No, this is Glacier Banana Juice, which has mint menthol and cooling in it. And when it hits your lips, you can tell. And I notice now every tiny little droplet of spit back i get it's just like menthol hitting my mouth that said i do get a little spit back with the device but i've been using it quite a bit what i want to do is some freaking science i'm going to put some juice on this wood um i've been using this relo with tanks so i haven't got any juice or anything on this wood so i just want to take the door off and i want to put some juice on it and kind of rub it in and see what happens, see if I can wipe it off or see if it'll stain it or anything. I know a lot of people were asking like, how does the wood hold up over time if, you know, if you're getting juice splatters on it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I got a rag, I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna take some uh, rainbow sherbet in the dark and I'm just gonna drop a couple drops on it. Just 
carelessly, not even looking, just drops on it. And that's all nice and juicy now. And I'm going to take my bare finger and I'm going to kind of rub it around and just smear it. Like, oh, it just really leaked from the atomizer really bad. Like that's like a worst case scenario. There's just juice everywhere. Looks like uh, wet wood, I guess. Doesn't appear to be staining it in any way. So I'm going to take my juice rag here and I'm going to wipe it off. Yeah, doesn't really wipe off really easy. It seems to have darkened this wood a little bit. Um, it seems to be, uh, the wood seems to be absorbing the juice. Um, I can wipe it and wipe it and wipe it. It still smells heavily of sherbet. The juice is in the little uh, cracks from bending it and, you know, the way the wood is. I can still see a little bit of juice glistening in those little cracks, which I'm not sure I'll ever be able to get out of there. It seems to, uh, I don't know, seems to have come off completely. It's not sticky or, uh, I mean, I don't know why it would be sticky. Juice is never sticky. It's not, it doesn't feel slimy. It does feel like there's a little bit of juice residue on there. Let me wipe it off some more. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think juice is really gonna affect it. Uh, that doesn't look stained or warped or anything like that. I was able to wipe all the juice off eventually and uh, yeah. So I don't know, more science. Oh look, there's a little juice there. I had some on my thumb. No big deal. I don't think juice really affects these wood books skins. I don't know, maybe I'll do some more science. Maybe I'll throw some juice on there and let it sit like overnight. Oh. See if it really soaks in at that point. Oh. So next up on the what I've been vaping segment, I've been vaping my retro vape from uh, like, what was that, two weeks ago? K-Fun Light, uh, K-Fun Light, K-Fun Mini. Uh, this is the Snow Wolf Mini. Ah, K-Fun Mini, Snow Wolf Mini. This is the Han Solo wrap from J-Raps. I have this at a whopping 15 watts. It's a 1.6 ohm single coil in there. Mouth to lung hits for days. This is still an amazing vape. Really, really been enjoying that vape. Additionally, you guys saw the review for it this week, and if you didn't, go watch it. Praxis Decimus. Uh, this has been my go-to mod. I just love the ever-loving crap out of it. It's got that Spitfire tank, which people were telling me that this top part... Remember in the video, I was, I was freaked out about this top part. I'm like... Why does this top part come off? And of course now it's not going to come off. Why does this top part come off? And it's just O-rings in there. And that makes no sense. People are telling me, oh, it's because you can get different colored top caps. Like you can have a black one or a white one and then put a put a white one on your black tank. And then you, you know, it's for, for matchy-matchy, for aesthetic reasons. Cool. That's cool. Didn't really think about that. Also, evidently this tank is reverse threaded. And I've been trying to ugh, crank it apart. Couldn't do it. Evidently it's a... Uh, reverse threaded on the inside which kind of actually makes a whole lot of sense but i've got lane cove samantha in here spitfire tank on the praxis decimus 50 watts 0.5 ohms 5.2 volts this is a wonderful wonderful vape no real surprises here Noisy Cricket uh, with the, this is actually the Boson RDA, and someone told me, who emailed me to tell me this? Sean, Sean emailed me and told me that the Twisted Messes RDA cap fits on the Boson RDA, and it actually works really, really well, and the deck of the Boson cuts the Twisted Messes airflow completely in half horizontally across it. It creates a slightly stiffer Twisted Messes airflow on the Boson, which is a nice big two-post deck. Sits on there about as good as it sits on the Twisted Messes deck. Uh, this is Lane Cove Mai-E. This is a 0.38 ohm uh, Fuse Clapton dual coil on here. I mean, obviously, we see this a million times. One of my favorite vapes. Just super nice, super hot, super flavorful. I'm not going to go in depth about that one again because I talk about the damn noisy cricket every week. I was going back on some of my old Instagram posts. And I went back to Vapor Dynasty Expo and I saw this picture of the hater box with the gold dot mod uh, Petri atomizer. And I'm like, man, I really, really liked that vape. 
So I went back into my closet up here. I pulled out the hater box. I put a fresh squid dude build on this dot mod Petri RDA. I've been running uh, the Ronin Emperor's Crunch on it. It's just been awesome. I am so pumped on this vape. This was one of my favorite vapes from at least like two or three months ago, back in October. It's back and I'm loving every second of it now. This is a something. It's a it's a squid dude coil and I put both coils on here and it came out low, like 0.09, which is a little bit lower than I generally go. On a parallel box, I feel comfortable using it, certainly not on a single 18650 mech mod or anything like that, but on a parallel box, I definitely feel comfortable using it. It's funny because this is 0.09 running at well, now 3 volts. It feels the exact same as a 0.4 ohm build on a series box. Weird, right? It feels the exact same. Let me make sure these coils are wet, which they are. Great vape. Good, it's just good, it's just delicious. And of course, I'm gonna have links for everything in this video that I talk about, uh, vape related or otherwise, it's all gonna be down there in the description. Loads and loads of links. Last thing I've been using, and for no real reason other than it's here. This is the K-Box 120. This is the one we talked about a while ago that supposedly does temperature control for niachrome. Well, I haven't been using it in temperature control for niachrome. I've just been using it with that double vision RDE on here. This is that fan slightly fancy build I did. I have this maxed out to 120 watts. It's a 0.10 ohm coil, and I have it maxed out to 120 watts. I've really been enjoying this double vision RDA. I've been vaping it with... Uh, some new juice from Squid Dude, actually. This is his juice line, literally called Juice. This is the jade from that juice line. It's like a spicy pear apple. Really, really good, very refreshing. I've obviously really been enjoying it, and uh, it's been a good vape on this. This Kanger K-Box 120 isn't amazing. It's not really cool or groundbreaking or anything. But I found over the last week or so, it's really reliable. Uh, I just threw this on here and I haven't had a reason to take it off. I never felt like there was a lack of power or that the mod was too big or anything like that. It fits on here, looks pretty cool. The button works and I got it maxed out at 120 watts right now. So, you know, good vape. Yeah, that jade, that jade is good. It reminds me of something, though. It reminds me of a flavor or a juice I've had in the past. It's like a spiced pear apple. It's just really weird. I feel like he might use a little bit of melon in there, like a spiced pear apple, like ugh, like melon, like just a, like a bloop of melon in there. I don't know. It's good. I've just been... Uh, I've just been really enjoying it. So that ran way too long. <laughs> I do have some advocacy related stuff to talk about. Um, there's a call to action right now in Florida. Alex B sent me this from the CASA website. This is the CASA call to action. Florida call to action, oppose the indoor vaping ban HB 1143. So as predicted, this is from the website, as predicted, HB 1143, which would prohibit the use of electronic cigarettes and vapor products, the same places where smoking is banned, was passed out of the Health Quality Subcommittee yesterday, January 19th, 2016. However, this is by no means the end of the process. A special thanks are in order to the Florida Advocates. Uh, VISTA, VISTA, and the FSFA, retailers and consumers who took advantage of the opportunity to, to represent accurate and compelling testimony in the opposition of this bill. Our cooperative, our cooperative, why did I say that so weird? Our cooperative efforts generated well over 14,000 emails being sent to the committee in a matter of a few hours from a thousand plus Florida residents. HB 1143 will move on to at least one more committee hearing and likely a second. In the interim, Florida advocates are encouraged to continue contacting, contacting their representatives and urging them to oppose this bill. Take a moment today and make a call, make your voice heard. They have a little link 
oppose HB 1143, make a phone call. We will update this as the bill progresses. So I'm going to post the link in the description to oppose HB 1143 in Florida. And uh, Florida residents, absolutely. I know there's a lot of you out there. I see JT Jonathan Thomas Vape Stars making the rounds in Florida, and I'm sure he's advocating like crazy to all the shops down there. Jump on this because, as they said, just because it passes one committee meeting, that doesn't mean that that's the end of it. This happens all the time in California, has to go through multiple, multiple committee meeting hearings, and this, that, and the other before it finally becomes like a thing. So you still have plenty, plenty of time to call and send emails. Now, this second one just makes me rage like crazy. Who sent this to me? Andrew. Andrew sent this to me via email. This is from the chicagotribune.com. And this big headline says, Public Health Campaign Takes Aim at Vaping Among City Youth. Sounds familiar, right? Remember still blowing smoke in California? Yeah, still blowing smoke was a thing before not blowing smoke was a thing. This is dated December 23rd, 2015. They have this big graphic from Health Chicago that says, Vaping is liquid poison use the hashtag vaping truth to learn more so obviously what i suggest we do is completely hijack hashtag vaping truth so that if someone sees this and goes vaping is liquid poison and they search for the vaping truth hashtag what they're going to come across is people who are not smokers anymore thanks to vaping and advocates that are not smokers anymore thanks to vaping the article goes on and on the mayor's office of chicago public health launched a public awareness campaign to warn residents of the dangers of vaping the campaign targeted at young people and their families rolled out this week with the social media puth, puth? <laughs> push as the health department posted links to studies about nicotine on Facebook and Twitter. Digital and billboard advertisements will appear starting Monday, and the ads have bold, colorful text that reads, Vaping is liquid poison. Vaping, it's still an addiction. And vaping, why risk it? Now, I can't even begin to tell you all of the logical fallacies that those represent not only that, it's just scare tactics. Vaping is liquid poison. There's no evidence to suggest that vaping is liquid poison. Yes, nicotine, raw nicotine in its purest form is essentially a poison. This is a half truth. They don't tell you that the nicotine is in a very incredibly very low small amount suspended in a dilution in the bottle with PG and VG and other flavorings in there. One of the things that this article does that is just one of my biggest pet peeves of all time. Let me read you this little, little paragraph right here. We know there are risks including nicotine addiction, impact on brain development, and negative health effects associated with the chemicals in e-liquid. They use the word chemicals as a scare tactic. And when people use the word chemicals as a scare tactic, I instantly assume that they have no idea what a chemical is. You know what else, a chem you know what else is a chemical? That's right, water. H2O is a chemical. I can't believe that people would support drinking chemicals every single day. You know what else is a chemical? Diamond, that's right, it's carbon, and that is a chemical. It's a chemical that people wear on their fingers and in their ears. How would people support wearing chemicals? I just hate it. I just hate it. I just hate it when people uh, use the word chemical as a scare tactic because that just shows me you have no idea what a chemical is. I get too mad. I get too angry reading this article. Uh, they're in California, they started the not blowing smoke. I think we should hijack hashtag vaping truth and show Chicago that uh, this is not vaping liquid poison, that chemical is not a bad word, and that we're not advertising to kids. And that's the thing is there's kids that are only going to find out about vaping because of this ad campaign. I guarantee it that there's kids out there that have no idea what vaping is, but they're gonna see these big, bright, yellow, black, and white billboards, and they're gonna see all about vaping, and then that's gonna pique their interest in vaping is this ad campaign. I know it, I just know it. Drives me insane. So anyway, I'm gonna rage, and I can't do that, so I'm gonna post a link in the description 
to this article if you wish to uh, share it around or read it and, and get mad. But thank you, Andrew, for sending that my way. Um, I did have one other subject I wanted to talk about. Unfortunately, it's not really a pressing issue, and it's going to have to wait until next week so that this vlog doesn't end up being two hours long. But we've already we've already covered uh, a lot, and what I want to do now is get over there, right over there. You see that? Can you see that over there? That's the beer section. Fascinating. <laughs> All right, sorry. So that that joke right there, the reading the Star Wars magazine, that's a recycled joke. Um, I'm using that in. I'm making a trailer for my channel. Uh, as it stands right now, when you go to my YouTube channel, it's just a video. It's just a review video, and so. YouTube says that you should put a channel trailer there to like describe your channel a little bit to people who click onto your channel. So duh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put together a, a channel trailer. Um, hopefully it'll be done by the time this vlog, if it's, if the channel trailer is done by the time this vlog is done, I'll put it right after the beer segment. And then you guys can tell me some feedback of whether or not you like it or not, or if I need to redo it. I think it turned out pretty good, at least the footage that I've shot. But anyway, it's not about that. What it's about right now is beer. So the beer I have comes to me by a fella named Nate. So Nate emailed me and he's like, hey, I was at a flea market, I believe, and I saw something there that I had to buy for you and I wanted to send it to you. And I'm like, okay. And I'm always a little bit sketchy. You know, people are, you know, sending me stuff to my address that where I live. And so I don't want this person to be crazy or send me, you know, their body hair or something weird. And so I, you know, I always try to email back and forth a little bit with the person before I just, I'm like, okay, well, fine. Here's exactly where I live. Anyway, Nate seems like a really super cool guy, super totally normal guy. And he sent me this. Do you see this? This is a license plate. It's like a plexiglass with a thick plexiglass stormtrooper on it. And in black etched back here, it says stormtrooper. And that's not a completely super accurate stormtrooper. Sorry, I was covering up my mouth. It's not a completely super accurate stormtrooper, but it looks like a stormtrooper. It's a cool license plate. I am going to put this somewhere. We'll figure out. We'll figure out a spot. We'll figure out a spot for this license plate, Nate. Thank you for sending that my way. Um, additionally, he included, he says, uh, uh, as an extra thank you, I added one of my favorite beers, which is sought after down here in Florida. Hope you enjoy it. Nate and all your Floridian friends, get on that CASA call to action, and thank you so much for the beer. And the beer we're going to be drinking tonight comes from Funky Buddha Brewery, Find the Goodness Within. Hmm. It's called Last Snow, and it's a coconut coffee porter which just sounds freaking delicious to me. It says porter with coconut, coffee, and other natural flavors. It's got a snowman made of coconuts wearing sunglasses in what I'm assuming is Florida where they don't get any snow, so they have to build snowmen out of coconuts. I didn't know that they did that, but apparently, I mean, why would this label lie to me? So over on the Beer Advocate, this has a 98% rating, which is a top notch, I mean, world-class beer. And as I always do, I'm gonna look at what the top rater has to say, oh, you wrote a novel, didn't you? Well, I'm gonna have to go down. Appearance arrives at the bar with a mocha head that sits atop a snifter of black liquid and leaves strands of lace here and there. So romantic, isn't it? The smell is that of coffee and coconuts and vague chocolate elements. Coffee and coconut flavors dominate the opening, with undertones of white chocolate developing by mid-palate. The bitterness of the coffee supplemented by the hops as it balances out some of the sweetness in the brew, though. The finish, though coconut elements, can continue to be descended in the aftertaste. Oh, discerned in the aftertaste. I like descended in the aftertaste better. Medium to full body with moderate carbonation or effervescence. Just a tad flabby? I've never heard a beer described as flabby. Interesting. I'll be interested to see if I get any flabbiness from this beer. Overall, very interesting, unique flavor combinations. Of course, that's what Funky Buddha is known for. While I have a minor quibble with the mouthfeel, this is an outstanding beer. Well, got my sex toy bottle opener. Thank God there's no corks on here. Gonna pop it open, uh, give it a smell. 
Well, that smells uh, very, very sweet. I'm smelling a lot of coconut sweetness and not like a natural coconut. If you ever had natural coconut, it tastes nothing like a Mounds Bar or an Almond Joy. It, it, this has like a candied coconut flavor to it, which is disorienting a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to be pouring it into uh, my favorite modern times uh, beer glass, not over my keyboard. And yeah, this is just a super, super dark beer. It does have a nice uh, head on there. I'm going to give it a bit of an aggressive pour so I can get some of that head to show. Look at that, Ruby. How's that? I'm going to have to drink through that like a man now. Still, I'm getting that candied coconut coffee smell. It's very interesting. Hmm. 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 Favorite Modern Times cup. I love this cup. Um, and I know this video, this beer segment is not about Modern Times, but Modern Times just released a new IPA beer. It's called something sun, living in the sun, frolicking in the sun, land of the sun, day of the sun, clouds of the sun, something of the sun. I can't remember what it's called. I'm not a huge IPA guy, and I loved this IPA beer. It was nice and nice and sweet. It didn't taste uh, awful or anything. All right, well, I'm going to drink through this head like a man. Thank you, Nate, for this beer. Evidently, it's quite good uh, and sought after in Florida. Cheers. Here's to you. Yep. Super sweet. It's very carbonated, it's very effervescent. It's effervescent. This is a really, really sweet beer. I get a coffee flavor from it, but it's not like other coffee stouts. Other coffee stouts, or sorry, I know this isn't a stout. I just, other coffee beers, how about that, have a very like dark roasted coffee. Like just grabbing a scoop of coffee out of the bag and jamming it in your mouth hole. That's like the kind of like earthy, coffee flavor that you generally get from coffee beers. This tastes like someone made a coffee frappuccino at Starbucks and then dumped it in the beer. You know what I mean? It's got like essence of coffee, but it's really more of like a sweet coffee like those bottled frappuccinos. That's what this reminds me of. Okay, get a bottled frappuccino, two pumps of coconut syrup, pour that in a beer and you'll have this. Actually, don't do that because that would be disgusting, but that's kind of the flavors that I'm getting from this. It's very, very sweet and latte-ish, like frappuccino-ish, and the coconut is definitely not like a natural coconut. It tastes very, very artificial, but with that said, it is really enjoyable and sweet, and uh, I have a feeling this is going to be an easy drinking beer. I want to check the alcohol on this so I don't... Uh, go two bananas and get all hammered by the end. Okay, only 6.4%. No big deal. No big deal. Really good beer. It's good. That's really good. Now, the problem I'm going to be running into here is that I literally have nothing, nothing to pair it with. It wouldn't go with my E. It definitely wouldn't go with Glacier Banana. Sherbet in the Dark, no. Lane Cove, no. <sighs> Emperor's Crunch? I mean... I'm grasping at straws here. Emperor's Crunch? Nah. It might. <laughs> this is a long shot, but it might, might go with Emperor's Crunch. Although, I don't see this. I don't see this working out at all right now. I wish I had a coconut coffee, like, vape. I mean, I do. I might. I don't know. I don't even know if I have a coconut coffee vape. I'm going to try this Emperor's Crunch with the uh, Last Snow. What am I doing? That's not how you do a vape pairing. This is how you do a vape pairing. It's fine. It's fine. That juice actually brings out a lot more of the coffee flavor, which is interesting. But it's fine. It's not a great pairing. You know what might actually pair well with it is... Uh, the juice I have in this Watofo Serpent. Now, this isn't a juice you can buy. My buddy John, uh, John and Jessica, they make uh, just a, uh, it's like a homebrew juice. They don't sell it or anything. It's just their juice that they vape and make. Um, it's mostly banana. It's like a banana bakery flavor. Um, it is freaking delicious. Might pair really well.
eh, it's not bad. Today's not my best vape pairing day. I apologize. Neither of those juices and none of these juices here, especially not Glacier Banana, definitely not. Pink Chill, my, that's all I have. I have nothing right now that will pair with a beer. I actually have Yig going in nothing right now as well, which is kind of a bummer, but... What are you going to do? You know what I mean? You move forward, you enjoy your beer as it is, and uh, that's what it is. So thank you, Nate, once again for sending me this last snow. I'm going to keep enjoying it throughout the vlog. And uh, what I want to do now after the beer segment, I'm going to show you my channel trailer. Let me know what you think. And then right after that, we're going to go straight into shout outs. Fascinating. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. If you're watching this, then you may have accidentally clicked on my YouTube channel after searching for videos of NBC's hit television show, Grimm. Or you might have been walking down the street and seen someone smoking something that looked like a remote control while exhaling something that looked like a weather system and thought, I wonder what that is. Either way, before you click away, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Nick and I go by Grim Green here on the internet and I've been tobacco free for over seven years now, thanks to this thanks to vaping. And that's what this channel is all about. I do reviews of a lot of devices, a lot of atomizers, a lot of tanks. I have some tutorials about coil building and wicking and batteries and everything that goes along with vaping. I upload brand new videos every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, and every Thursday too? Every Thursday I upload a long format video called The Vlog or What's in the News Robin where we cover a multitude of subjects from first impressions of vaping products to beer tastings to advocacy to legislation and the FDA regarding laws about vaping. It's just a really good time all around. So if this is your first time here, click down there watch some videos I have a couple helpful playlists of some of my favorite vapes and and all the vlogs actually so this is not as professional as I had wanted it to be I am incredibly passionate about vaping it's the one thing that's kept me from smoking cigarettes for the last seven years I do believe it's an incredibly incredibly powerful tool for helping people stay away from traditional tobacco cigarettes. As for me, I'm just a regular guy that likes vaping a whole lot. Sometimes I talk about Star Wars, I have a lot of tattoos, I listen to metal music, and everything I do is from the point of view of your average consumer. So if you're a smoker and you're trying to get away from traditional tobacco cigarettes, or if you're a vapor and you're trying to decide on your next RDA, stick around, watch some videos, maybe hit that subscribe button, or come back later and see if I I've done anything funny. All right, that's it. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're a vapor, let's keep on vaping. I'm going to go back to reading about John Boyega learning how to use a lightsaber. Good stuff. It is shout out time. Oh, this is the email. Okay, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. This is for another subject. I apologize to Jack. I was going to talk about the subject you emailed me about, but we're going to do that la next week. I promise. Um, shout out, yes, absolutely, Nate for the beer, for the Stormtrooper. Um, let me read you the email that he sent me initially. Uh, I'm a fan. I, hey, Nick, I've been a big fan of yours uh, since I started vaping about five months ago, and I was told about your channel by my friend Kevin. Kevin is the man that got me into vaping. I was always an occasional smoker. When Kevin showed me vaping, uh, I stopped smoking and haven't looked back. He himself was a regular smoker and had, be, had been free of them for 898 days, two and a half years. Vaping has improved his life so much. Uh, one of the attached pictures is of Kevin and you from Vape Fest Ireland. Since I started watching your channel, I look forward to your views and your vlogs. The vlog is my favorite thing to watch while I work on Thursday afternoons. I look forward to every segment and I love the beer segments. I'm a big craft beer guy and I love your take and reviews on beers. I myself have a love of Star Wars. Recently, I was at a silent auction. It wasn't a flea market. It was a silent auction for a friend of mine who had been three years cancer free. One of the items that was being auctioned off was a Stormtrooper license plate. It is etched out so the logo of the trooper sits above the plate. Once I saw it, I knew I wanted to win it and send it to you. I wanted to thank you for what you do. Uh, the shout out you gave me all the way from Ireland. Thanks for being an awesome dude. If you find it possible, I would love to send you this license plate. I will also need your address. I'm attaching pictures of the license plate and of Kevin and you as well as the shout out video you are more than welcome to use them so yeah i met his friend kevin in uh, vape fest ireland and 
uh, me and Kevin just got on his camera phone and we did a sh- we did a double shout out to Nate, being like, "Oh, Vape Fest Island, we're having so much fun. Wish you were here, bro. Come hang out." And it was, it, it was just I don't know. It was really good times. And Nate, yes, look at this. If I can get it. Ah, oh, crap. Thank you. I got it. It's it's awesome. Uh, thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. I'm just a Star Wars guy, and you know, Star Wars stuff just makes me happy. Thank you, Nate. So this one's going all the way back in time to October 1st, 2015. Daniel writes to me and says, Hey Nick, I just started watching your YouTube about two years ago and I've seen all your videos. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Trevor, boom, shout it out, for showing me your YouTube channel. Me and him look forward to watching your vlogs every week. It would be greatly appreciated if you could shout us out. Absolutely. Daniel, you are shouted out, as is your friend Tyler, not Tyler, Taylor. Taylor is shouted out. Daniel is shouted out. Hope you guys are uh, hope you guys are watching the vlog right now, and your minds are just blown. And you're like you're both watching the vlog, and you go, "What?" And you look at each other, and you go, "No way! You wanted a shout out. We got a shout out." And then you guys hug, and you're just best friends for the rest of your life. And that's how I want this story to end. So absolutely, <laughs> you guys are both shouted out. Got time for a couple more shout outs. Uh, I can't pronounce this person's name. It, I'm going to say Lassie. <laughs> anyway, he writes to me and says, Hi, Nick. I'm a vapor from Finland, so my English is not so good. I'm sorry about this. Again, if you're in any foreign country, Norway or Finland or anywhere, anywhere, any foreign country, and English is not your native language, don't ever apologize for the way that you speak or type because chances are it's pretty good. And in your case, yes, it's really, really good. I'm writing you from my bed. The reason for this is I'm I'm an addict and I'm trying to fight the opiate sickness and kick the habit altogether. More power to you, brother. I'm doing quite well at the moment since I'm watching your Thursday vlog from YouTube. It helps me a lot, exclamation point, about one and a half hours of pure entertainment that puts my mind away from the depression and pain. I am so, so grateful to you. Keep up the good work. If you want to shout me out, that would mean the world to me, but you don't have to do it. Thanks, Nick. Lassie. Lassie? 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 It's not Lassie. It could be Lassie. Lassie, I don't know. My vapor friend in Finland, uh, wish you a, a very speedy recovery from your addiction. And thank you so much for the kind words. I'm, I'm truly glad that the vlog has helped you in some way. Although saying an hour and a half of pure entertainment might be a bit of a stretch. It's probably at least 10 solid minutes of pure entertainment. And then like an hour and 20 minutes of rambling and nothingness and just jump cuts. Becky writes to me from the UK and she says, Hi Nick, Becky here from the UK. I just wondered if it would be possible to get a shout out to my amazing fiance, Brad. He has been following you from day one and absolutely loves you and swears by you. It's just, it's just he has been struggling for over two Two years now with health, anxiety, and depression. Not many people take it seriously, but it is an awful thing to have. I don't know how he copes with it, but he does. What helps calm him down and put a smile on his face is watching your videos. He's just amazing. I love him so much, and thank you for doing what you do, because it helps in so many different ways. Thank you for your time. Keep on vaping. Big thumbs up. Becky face, smiley, sent from my Sony Xperia trademarked smartphone. (laughs) Absolutely. Becky, you are shouted out. Brad, you are shouted out. I've had uh, friends, people I've dated that have uh, suffered from pretty severe depression and anxiety. So I know, I don't know what that feels like, um, but I know how it affects people. And I know I've seen very, very dear friends and family uh, cope with it. And so you are stronger than you realize, sir, but I'm thank you so much for watching the vlogs. And again, I'm I'm honored. Uh, thank you. I'm glad that they they somehow help you a little bit. And I hope this shout out helps you out just a little bit too. So we're gonna get to my last shout out here. And I've been saving this one. This was this has been in my email reminder for a while, for well over a month now. So, last shout out of the night. Hiya, Nick. 
It's only me, Susie Lady from YouTube. This is a one month advance alert. My birthday is the 30th of January and I would love it, love it, love it if you would shout me out in your vlog, seeing as I'm a huge fan of your channel, Smiley Face. You are so kind to people and have a heart of gold. Keep doing what you do and I know that I'm sending you all my best regards. Thanks in advance, Smiley Face, hugs, Susie X, I sent this from my iPhone. Yes, Susie Lady, absolutely. Come here, here's a hug. Hug. Susie Lady, happy birthday. I always see Susie Lazy. Lazy? Nope. Yep. Susie Lady commenting on all my videos. She's always just so nice, so personable, so nice to the people around her. If you've had the pleasure of having your comment answered by Susie Lady, she's just so nice. I have absolutely no problem giving you a huge birthday shout out. Today is not your birthday, but your birthday is this Saturday. Thursday is, today is the 28th, Thursday, January 28th. That means that your birthday, January 30th, is this Saturday. I hope it's just fan freaking Fantastic, Susie Lady. Thank you for all the comments. You're more than welcome. You, anybody else, more than welcome to comment whenever you want. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for all the love and happy birthday. So, after all of these shout outs, what I want to do now, and I don't have a whole lot of them, thankfully, this week because I do have a retro vaping segment prepared, I want to get to a couple first impressions. All right, first impression time. So one of the things I wanted to do a first impression for, and I was really hoping it would get here this week, and it just hasn't arrived just because of issues with DAL, UL, the makers of the crown, the most overhyped tank of all time, they have a new tank coming out. And already, before anybody has it, there's all this hype around it. Crown has a new tank. Crown has a new tank. New tank. New tank. I have been talking to Jesse from Crown. My her, Jesse my contact at crown this was like a week ago no it's been like two weeks now where they sent me a shipment dhl called me and says we were told you don't live there anymore what's your new address and i said no i live here still this is the correct address just i i know my dhl guy i see him all the time he knows i'm here he knows how to get into my building i talk to him every day they said, okay, great. Package never came. And then Jesse from UL goes, hey, where's your package? Why haven't I seen any videos on YouTube yet? We're expecting your great review. And I said, hey, Jesse, I didn't, I haven't got the package yet. I talked to DHL. We're getting it sorted out. There was a, some misunderstanding with if I was actually at this address anymore, but I assured them that I'm at this address. Package never came. Fast forward a week, I contact DHL again, and they said, someone called and rerouted your package to Burbank, California, which if you're familiar with California, Burbank is like three hours away from me. So somehow someone intercepted this package, called DHL, got the tracking number, told them that I don't live here anymore and that it needs to go to Burbank. So someone got, someone in Burbank got my package of new tanks from UL. And I told this to Jesse, and she's like, no, no, that could have never happened. And I talked to DHL, and they're like, I don't understand how this happened. How did somebody call and reroute it? And I said, I don't know. You're DHL. You should know how the system works. DHL has been very, very accommodating. They're investigating why this happened. Uh, UL sent another package, which should be here sometime this week. It'll probably be in next week's vlog video, but I'm, that's the long story short. I'm expecting a new tank from UL that I'm actually kind of excited about because I'm hoping it's better than the crown was, and it should have been in this video, but it's not. And thankfully, I do have some other cool stuff to talk about. Um, Vapor Flask is doing a Wismec on us. They're working with Wismec. They're doing three new devices. Uh, these are available from Vape Forward, and I'll post links in the description to all my first impressions. So Vapor Flask became Vape Forward, kinda, but they're still selling Vapor Flasks, and it's being done through Wismec, the same people that are doing the Relo and the Noisy Cricket and the Pressa, which I just had a review for this week. They're doing a couple new Vapor Flask products. So they have the Vapor Flask Classic, which I have one, but I haven't opened it yet because I have a, an SX Vapor Flask right here. And so, 
I don't know if I'm going to actually open this Vapor Flask Classic. If anything, I'm going to open it. I have to open it. If anything, I'm going to open it. I'm going to use it for a while. I'm going to knock out a review, and then we're just going to give it away. I have an SX Vapor, Vapor Flask. I don't need the Vapor Flask Classic. We're just going to do a giveaway for it later. They have the Vapor Flask Classic, which looks like the Vapor Flask, but it opens differently. What I was more excited about than those two are the Vapor Flask Light and the Vapor Flask Stout. Now, Matt from Suck My Mod has a review for both of these products right now. I only just got these products, so I'm gonna need to spend some more time with them before I feel comfortable talking about them. So far, they've been really good. I don't wanna say good, they've been really decent. There's one weird thing that I've noticed on both of these. So, the this is the Vapor Flask uh, Mini, by the way. It's called the Vapor Flask Lite. It's still slightly curved. It's got a spring-loaded 510, clicky button here, display, two up-down buttons, and uh, you know, there's the USB port for upgrading your software. It has a single 18650, and the way the door slides open, it's like on a hinge, right? And you have to be careful, shit, this one's stuck in here. You have to be careful when you're opening it because these doors grab battery wraps when you're closing it and when you're opening it. They like to grab battery wraps, which is weird, I guess. So single 18650 hole right there. And see, this is the hinged door kind of right here. It snaps into position down and it snaps into position closed, snaps into position open. So it'll stay open. It's not gonna wobble or anything like that. Battery goes in and then you have to press down on your battery and get this started and kind of close it halfway and then snap it the rest of the way shut. If you don't do that, if you just leave your battery kind of floating above the surface and you try to close this, it's gonna grab your battery wrap, man, and it's gonna peel it off, and that is never a good idea. Even in regulated mods, you want your battery wraps to look good and perfect all the time. It can cause really bad things, battery venting and shorts and stuff like this to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Spitfire tank, and I'm gonna throw it on here, and we're gonna vape it. Yeah, that just looks really cool. It's 22 millimeters. This tank is 22 millimeters. It fits on there. It looks good on there. So this does temperature control and it does up to 75 watts, which is kind of the standard, I guess, for a single 18650 battery. This is a 0.49 ohm coil. So I'm gonna turn this up to like, I don't know, 60 watts? Let's stop at 53.5 watts and let's have a vape on it. I do like this button. It's like its own unique button. There's a lot of mods where it's like, oh, that's the same button from this mod or that's the same button from this mod. This is a clicky, rounded, nice, big sized button on there, which I really, really like. Even though it's a, it's a light, it's a mini size, it still has that slight curvature. It still fits in your hand really nicely. Plenty, plenty of power, 53 watts. Wow, 53.5 watts, what did I have the decimus set to? I had it set to 50 watts, okay, well that makes more sense why this is hitting harder, because I have the wattage turned up. 53 watts with this tank, that's a really good vape. There is a slight, slight delay between actually firing and pressing the button. Slight, slight delay, it's a lot like the decimus, it's like, 0.2 seconds. It's nice. I'm actually going to leave this tank on uh, this device and find a new RDA or something for that Decimus because I like the way this feels. I like holding this in this little package right here. I like small mods and it's not because I like using them for my everyday bangers. It's because when I leave the house or when I go to a show, I'm going to see Cannibal Corpse soon, right? I'm going to see At The Gates soon in San Diego. I'm going to see Cradle of Filth soon in San Diego. I like to take with me just a tiny little mod, just a single 18650 in a tank. I can throw it in my pocket. I can show the security guard. I can go, no, this is my little e-cig. And he'll say, oh, no, you can't vape it inside. And I'm like, I know, it's cool. I'm not going to leave it out here. I'm just going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to lock it. You won't see any vaping inside. I, I like having little tiny mods to take with me and single 18650 with 75 watts. This is a 0.4 ohm build, uh, build, coil head on here, hitting over five volts, it's great.
So the other thing that Vapor Flask has released through Vape Forward is the Vapor Flask Stout, which is a different shape. It's like a teardrop shape. It's not curved like the, the mini in the full size. It's, it's like a teardrop shape. Super comfortable in the hand. Same display, same clicky buttons, same firmware on it. Um, you upgrade the firmware obviously through the USB port, but it's got the same buttons, the same spring-loaded 510, the same buttons, everything's the same except for the shape and the battery that it uses. This uses a 26650 battery which is awesome. You don't see a lot of 26650 mods out there anymore. And when everyone was going 26650 mod crazy, I went and bought, look at this, there's four 26650s, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine 26650 batteries that have literally just been sitting here, not getting used at all. So when this came in, I'm like, charge those up i'm putting it in the vapor flask stout it's just going to give you a little bit longer of a battery life the vapor flask stout does what vapor flask stout puts out a hundred watts on a single 26650 it puts out a hundred watts this little thing is a hundred watts that is crazy. So I'm running it at 37 watts right now, which explains why my battery life has been so freaking amazing. It does temperature control for nickel, titanium, stainless steel, and it has a bypass mode so you can use it as like an unregulated single 26650 device. I really do like the black. I would love, love a silver. The silver just looks way cooler to me. I have so many black mods. I would love, love a silver mod. They just look cool. But this is the stout. What's interesting is, let me just have a vape on it. This is the uh, Watofo Serpent. You're right, Matt. It is a great tank. I have a uh, Fuse Clapton in here, single coil. It's a bitch to build on. But once you get it going, it is great. And this is more of a John's banana, bakery banana. Good. It's a really good vape. Now, this is a series. No, so this borderlines on like something I would take to like a Cannibal Corp show and something I would take all day with me here or at a vape meet or something. I mean, single 26650 at 38 watts. I'm going to get a nice long battery life out of that. I'm going to get plenty of power. This is a great setup right here. I might take this to the next vape meet I attend. I just really like it. Now, this has the same hinged thing, and you have to be careful. Yep, Brilla Power. Brilla Power 26650. You have to be careful taking your 26650, you know, closing this. You have to do that thing where you press the battery down because it's spring loaded in there. So press the battery down, then slide it over, and it'll lock into position. Unlock it. And uh, this one doesn't grab the wraps quite as hard. But what's unique about this is it can use. An 18650 battery. Let me get one of my junky 18650 battery. Mod works. Yeah, remember when Mooch reviewed these? So it'll run on an 18650 as well because it comes with this plastic insert that has O-rings at the top and bottom. Looks like a little barbell, like you're just in the gym getting your swole on. 999, 1,000. I don't know if you heard me counting, but I did over 1,000. You just slide that in there. It just goes in, and then that holds... Your single 18650 battery you can you know do the thing where you close it boom there you go point uh same oh resistance same everything 0.42 4 volts 38 watts still a really good vape and it can do an 18650 if you don't have any 26650s but really if you're going to get the vapor flask stout get some 26650 batteries I'm gonna put this in here again, Ugh, just like that. In fact, I have actual Sony 26650 batteries when they were making 26650 batteries. I was at work one night, really late at night because it was graveyard, and Vapor Joe posted a deal on Vapor Joe's and I checked it and it's like, Samsung VTC5 authentic 26650 batteries. So I jumped on to eBay. I bought three of them. The next day they were all gone and I've never seen them since. So does anyone know if these are real Sony VTC4 or VTC5 26650s? Because I've been assuming that they are and I've been using them, but whatever, it is what it is. There you go. So 
Vapor Flask Stout, like with all my first impressions, I'm going to need to spend way, way more time with this before I feel comfortable doing a full review. Hope to do it sooner rather than later, though, just because there are a couple reviews. Matt has his reviews out, and I don't agree with him on absolutely everything, and so... Uh, I don't know, my review might be uh, useful and different, different perspectives, right? I don't know, I'm rambling right now. So, moving forward from here, I'm going to go and I'm going to take this tank and I'm going to put it on this mod. Now, this literally just arrived today. This is the E-Leaf iStick 100 watt with TC. What? This feels exactly like the old 50 watt does. This is the highest quality feeling E-Leaf product that I have ever held in my hands. It's all nice hard aluminum on there, feels very substantial. It's got the traditional E-Leaf, you know, stripe down the middle like the 50 watt did. That's where your display is. It's got up, down, and a mode button, which you use to switch between stainless steel or nickel and this, that, and the other, or titanium. And then it's got three uh, memory settings on there. So I'm going to turn this up to, what did I have the vapor flask at? 38 watts. 38.4 so we're gonna go right back there 38.4 watts and I'm going down and that's the wrong way to go 38 1 2 3 4 38.4 watts so I got this and I'm sitting in my kitchen and I'm fiddling with it and I'm taking the panel off and I'm like oh okay that's how it works like this two 18 650 batteries like that so I throw this panel back on and I throw this panel back on and I'm like Okay, here's a physical lock. So that means the button. Where's the button? I'm looking through the instructions. These are all in French. I'm just kidding, they're not. Stealth on off. Vaping, long press fire button to take a puff. I see no fire button still, E-Leaf. So I'm looking at the diagram and it says the fire button is here. It says it's right here. So I'm like, is this, is this like a touch sensor up here? Is this like a touch sensor? Like, that's what they did? And then I squeezed it. And no, the fire button is this. But it's not like the Smoketech X-Cube 2. Just the top of this is the fire button. When you press the button on the bottom, nothing happens. When you press it in the middle, nothing happens. Only when you click it at the top. Remember the, go back and watch my Pressa review I did this week, yesterday. It's the same thing. It's like on a magnet at the bottom and it's a hinge and it's click E. You hear these clicks happening? You hear the clicks happening? So you can just kind of grab it and squeeze it and you feel unlike that stupid Smoke Tech X Cube 2, which I still get shit about, but I stand behind everything I said in that video. People still give me a hard time about that video. You get a satisfying, satisfying click sensation when the button activates. So here we go. This is the Watofo Serpent, 0.43 ohm, single fused Clapton, 38.4 watts on a dual 18650. This is uh, four volts. It's beautiful. It's just a beautiful vape. You can have the button against your palm, it doesn't matter. Just squeeze it. You can, oh, click. Oh, click. Oh, click. You can hold it like this and have the button up here. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. I can't help it. I just like a clicky button. So, one thing that I have not tried, and I, you guys need to hold me accountable to this, and I always do it, and I always, it pisses me off every time. As it stands on my desk, looking around, at different mods and tanks and that and Altus and the other tank we're gonna talk about and this. I have no temperature control builds. I have no nickel builds, I have no titanium, I have no stainless steel wire. I have no nothing temperature control because I don't vape temperature control. I just don't. If this iStick was just a 100 watt version two and it had no temperature control, I would be fine with that. Honestly, I don't use temperature control, but one thing that I need to do is actually use more temperature control. Like at least have a tank with a nice temp control build on it, like a nice titanium build on it, just so I can go, oh, this is titanium. It's really accurate with temperature control. I've used this a lot with temperature control. I just, what is that wobble? 
What is that wobble coming from? Oh, it's the tank. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so this tank is cranked down on here hard, and I can wobble it back and forth. I wonder if that's the, uh, I wonder if that's a junky 510 connection. Let me get something else. Let me try this atomizer. Let me try this uh, sub ohm innovation sub zero on here because I don't like that. That's very, very strange. Let's screw you on here. Yeah. I can feel it. It's screwed down tight and I can feel this 510 connection wobbling. What a freaking bummer, man. Oh, that is bumming me out. Okay, let me try one let me try one last tank. Let me try this Praxis Spitfire on here. And if it still wiggles, bummer days, man. I'm gonna be bummed out. Okay, so this one screws down and sits flush. Does not wiggle. Does not wiggle at all. No wiggling. No wiggling going on. But for some reason, this Watofo Serpent does have kind of a protruding 510 on there. I don't think you're going to be able to run a lot of RDAs on this uh, E-Leaf. Yeah, something with a protruding 510, like is supposed to be for like a, you know, a hybrid, like the Twisted Messes RDA or a lot of other RDAs, that Sub-Zero RDA, I'm assuming the Double Vision RDA. It's not going to sit flush on there, man. Now that this is sitting flush, it doesn't wobble. It was up just a hair, and I could feel it wobbling. Well, wow, I'm glad I got to the bottom of that. Don't even remember what I was saying. Uh, I stick 100 watt, clicky, click, 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 click. Temperature control. Even if I just had a tank with a sweet uh, build in it, I could use it in temperature control. As it stands, I haven't used the Vapor Flask Light in temperature control. I haven't used the SX350J in temperature control. I haven't used the Vapor Flask Stout in temperature control. I haven't even used the Snow Wolf Mini in temperature control yet. I've only been running Nichrome and Canthal builds on it because that's, that's what I like to vape. Temperature control doesn't matter to me. I know, I know, I'm saying it. It doesn't matter to me. It's just one of those things. I never really enjoyed it, and I don't want to vape with it, but I'm not going on a temperature control rant right now. I stick 100 watt. This one says sample on it, so I want to clear something up real quick to anybody watching and paying attention. Companies in China, every company in China that I've dealt with, they mark sample on the bottom of devices that they send to reviewers. It doesn't mean that this isn't a production version. It just means that it's a sample, not for resale. So that the reviewer, because I got five of these or four of these. It's so I don't create a, an account on eBay under a different name and sell these E-Leaf iSticks for 50 bucks a pop, which has been a problem in the past for these Chinese companies, it's to prevent that from happening. So in a lot of my reviews, especially in the Relo, people are like, well, it's a sample on it. That's not the final version. Yes, it is the final version, but people on YouTubers, they get ones that are marked sample or not for resale or something along those lines, even though it is the final production version. Cool. So like with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend way, way more time with this, but that clicky button, though, I'm going to have to investigate this 510 and see what does and doesn't fit on there. And I promise, I promise to start using temp control, at least for the purposes of shooting review videos. All right, so my last first impression of the night is going to be of this tank right here. So this comes from Samurai Mods. And this is the Kamikaze tank. And I kept seeing pictures of this on Instagram. And... I am just barely very familiar with who Samurai Mods is. I believe I met him at the last uh, SoCal Vape meet, um, so OC Vapors Club meet. And he sent me an email one day out of the blue with the picture of this Samurai tank and he laser etched my Grim Cult logo, the Raven with the Grim Cult metal logo on the chimney of the tank. And I'm like, that is so cool. That is so cool. That's amazing. So that's what I got in the mail. I got a Samurai uh, Kamikaze tank 
It's a sub-ohm tank. It has an RBA base that is really, really weird. I'll be honest, I've been having a lot of struggles with this tank. I've gone through three coil heads already, and now I'm onto the RBA base, and I still cannot get a good vape from it. The first thing that I notice is the airflow, really super stiff, really super stiff. Not mouth to lung stiff, but it's on that border where mouth to lung feels like nothing, but when you lung it, it feels so tight. Like there's just, it, it'd be like if you took an RDA and you just packed it full of cotton. That's kind of what this vapes like. It's a very like, like, oh, I can't describe it. It's just really stiff. So let's, uh, I'm going to have to turn the volt wattage way down on this because I've been getting constant, constant dry hits, constant dry hits. And that could be the way that I built it. But I don't think it is because I've rebuilt it like five times already. I've literally spent more time with this tank than I've spent with a lot of other stuff. So I'm going to turn this to 20 watts, okay? Starting off at a reasonable 20 watts, 0.5 ohms, 3.3 volts. Now I'm going to make sure that the juice flow is on. When you twist it counterclockwise, the juice flow is on. You can see holes and you can see juice going into those holes. It vapes. I'm not saying it doesn't vape. It does vape. That one was burnt. Oh, that one was burnt. That one sucks so bad. The airflow on it is so stiff. And to kind of compensate for that, they have one of these drip tips that looks beautiful, but has three airflow holes in the top on either side. So... If you vape it with those airflow holes facing you, you kind of cover them up with your lips. There's like, I don't know, four millimeters between your mouth lips and the airflow holes. They're like right there. So you literally have to vape this. If you want those top airflow holes, you kind of have to press it against your lips. Because anything, if you put this drip tip in your mouth a little bit, you cover up the you cover up those top hair fl airflow holes almost instantly. And that makes for a really nice open airflow. Now, when the RBA base is in here, the juice flow control just pivots back and forth without warning. Closed, open, closed, open, closed, open. It just pivots like crazy, like you can't imagine. It does it by itself. It just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now it's open, now it's closed. Open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. So I'm going to try to leave this open, close off those juice flow holes, or the air flow on the top of the drip tip, rather. And this drip tip, unfortunately, is proprietary. I have no other drip tips that fit in. The hole, the opening is just way too big for any other drip tips so you're kind of stuck using their drip tip and ah, i want to love this tank it looks so cool and it's got the grim cult logo etched onto the chimney and that just looks so cool unfortunately the vape i get from it is really really less than impressive i'm gonna email i'm gonna email the guy from samurai mods maybe i'm doing something wrong i don't know i really want to get a good vape off of this that one was borderline burnt what i want to do is show you the deck and then the coil heads so whoops it comes with a bunch of replacement coil heads at least mine did and it comes with a replacement glass tank and it comes with this is the base that the coil heads go into it's different than the base that the rda uses and when you're using this base with the coil heads the juice flow rubs against a a little silicone gasket type of material and so you have to physically turn the tank like and you can feel it rubbing against the rubber and like now it's closed and it won't open and then you switch it back to open and you're like now it's open it won't close it's much more secure with this now I, they gave me a spare one 
and I tried for the life of me to get it to work with the RBA bass, I could not do it. It wouldn't close. All I would end up doing is smashing this. So I just left it without it, and without it, the juice flow just, I mean, it's so effortless. This would move if you blew on it correctly. So what I'm gonna do is take this off, okay? I'm gonna let the juice get out of the tank and drain towards the top. I'm gonna pop the base off, just like that. And this is the RBA deck. You pull it out like it was a coil head, okay? You have this little, little deck to build on. Look how tiny this deck is. Do you see this tiny little deck right here? You have to capture the wires underneath the screws, which is a feat in of itself. It took me forever to build this. Then it has juice flow holes on either side, but this is the whole deck. It's this tiny little thing, and it goes into the base like you would insert, you know, uh, let me get this in focus, like you would insert a coil head. There's a right way and a wrong way to do it, and you, it just kind of seats in there, and that's what you do, and then you screw this base back on, and it'll make a connection, and I just kind of want to show you how easily it just opens and closes like crazy. My Samurai logo is upside down. I always do that for some reason. Just opens and closes. Maybe you can see the Grim Colt on there, maybe not, but that's the RBA base and it's just really tiny. And these are the coil heads right here. They're wrapped in cotton and then that cotton connects. I gotta, gotta keep this in focus. That cotton connects to cotton on the inside. So this is a one ohm Clapton coil in there. And looking through the center of it, I'd think, man, that just has so much airflow. It does not. It's really, really stiff. And additionally, this cotton around the outside that leads to the inside, I think it's too much juice flow because I was getting a lot of gurgly, gurgle, gurgliness. Even using a 70% VG juice, even using an 80% VG juice, I was getting just gurgle nation with these. I'm gonna try to put this back in, back in the tank and vape on it. All right, so I got this tank all taken apart and you're not gonna be able to see this until I do an actual review for it, but the way that you attach the chimney to the base has, is, it's weird. There's like a nut. <laughs> I know, it made me giggle too. There's a nut on the inside that you have to, you push this down onto the base and then you have to go in there with a screwdriver and screw it down from the inside. But it's not just a flathead screwdriver, it's like a washer with two marks taken out of it. And so you have to go in there with a screwdriver, a thin screwdriver and get it started on the threads and kind of work it around in like this weird circular motion. You only have to do this when switching between the RBA base and the coil head base. And you make sure it's tight so that now this is in the right position. And yeah, now the juice flow moves. It takes some effort to actually move it back and forth. So I saw on Instagram the, the way to set this up. So I'm gonna, you put a little juice on the coils they say to soak the outside in juice and then you put it all together and i have some chewy clouds red wedge watermelon uh so this is a watermelon bubblegum flavor i guess uh anyway i'm gonna be vaping it doesn't matter so let me let me get this tank together we're gonna screw the top on so it's all together nice and tight and yeah, that juice flow, gosh, it's so much better. So much better without that RBA base in there. Now, I'm going to wet this coil head just a little bit, just on the outside, not on the inside, just on the outside of it. Slides in and screws down. The bottom of the coil heads themselves are knurled, so you actually screw it into the tank like that, and then, you can put the base on. We're gonna put the base on just like that. And then I have the top open here. So we're gonna make sure the juice flow is closed. And then I'm just gonna fill this up with Chewy Clouds Red Wedge. God, this bottle fucking sucks. 
I hate this bottle. This is the hardest bottle I've ever had to squeeze in my life. That airflow's a little bit better with the one ohm Clapton coil, that nice big airflow hole through the center. Feels a little bit better, but I haven't got juice in there yet. So here's to hoping, here's to hoping it doesn't get gurgly. My, my pet peeve of life besides people using the word chemical wrong is dry hits on your very first hit on a tank. Little bit, little bit of vapor. Let's turn it up, let's turn it up a little bit. All right, so I finally got this up to 32 watts. It's a one ohm coil, Clapton, running at 5.8 volts, and I see bubbles coming from the juice flow when I take a drag. The airflow, still very, very stiff. I've closed off the airflow holes on the drip tip because I end up closing them off anyway with my mouth, and to me, airflow through the drip tip is a bad idea. I don't like it. I think if you wanna have a lot of airflow in your tank, then have a lot of airflow in your tank, but don't put airflow in the drip tip. I I despise that. It's one of the, it gives me just a really awkward vape. I hate that airflow. Okay, so got a one ohm coil, cranking at almost six volts here, 33 watts. Airflow's still very, very stiff, but at least I'm getting some pretty good flavor off of this. Not a, I mean, good performance, but not like cloud chasing performance, like from drippers that I'm used to. The flavor is really nice. This Chewy Clouds is actually pretty freaking good. I need to spend more time with this tank. It started off this way before. It was fine. And then after about 10 minutes of vaping, it became Gurgle Nation. So I'm gonna need to spend way more time with this Kamikaze tank. Um, I wanna reach out to the creator and see if this is the vape that he intended it to be because it feels really stiff to me, uh, especially from a tank being made in Southern California where there's a lot of cloud chasers. I figured he would have had a little bit more airflow on here. Even just a little bit more airflow, I think, would have gone a long way. But it is what it is. It's the Kamikaze tank. I apologize that took too long. I'm going to take some more time, spend some more time with this and all my first impressions before I feel comfortable reporting back with a full video. But after the first impressions, I don't have a review for things that never got reviewed this week. But what I do have this week is a retro vaping. So what's for, <laughs> oh, beer. Thank you for making me stupider. So what we're going to be retro vaping today is the iGo W5 with a crest cap. So once again, I was kind of going through my old vaping stuff and I came across this atomizer and I pulled it out and I have such fond memories of this atomizer. I went, yeah, you were the atomizer that I really first I don't know, started cloud chasing with. Like I, I really liked the airflow. And by today's standards, it feels a little bit tight to me. So this is the iGo W5 with a Crest cap. Now, the Crest cap used to be an exclusive VLS vapor lifestyle thing. What you can do is use your Google Foo and try to find one. I found the iGo W5 dripper um, from Ude Technologies for 20 bucks on Vapor Hub International, vapor-hub.com. And I cannot, for the life of me, find a crest cap anywhere. I just can't find it. The only way that I enjoyed the iGo W5 was with a crest cap. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was super, super fun, super, super cool. So what I'm gonna do, wow, look at that deck. It's crazy how quickly things change in the vape world. So I first uploaded this video for the iGo W5 and Crest Cap in July of 2014, I believe. Here we are, it's almost February of 2016. We have big two post RDAs with big airflow holes. This is a three post RDA, tiny tiny little post holes, tiny little wire post holes in there. I think I used to build this with 28 gauge canthal in here, 
What I really want to try out is this Yud Ferris Wheel of Coils. Um, I'm going to grab out some... So this is Canthal 30 gauge? Oh, it's twisted. What I want to find is... This should come out to 1 ohm. So these are pre-coiled coils. I wonder if the labels on here are for single coils or dual coils. Eh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to use this Yud ferris wheel of coils which i have dumped out no less than twice now and i'm gonna grab a couple coils out of here and i'm gonna throw them on this igo w5 really fast what i'm gonna be using is 28 gauge canthal it says what <laughs> what it says id2 oh 2.8 millimeters so it's 26 gauge canthal around a 2.8 millimeter post. I don't know. Let's just get these coils in here. Um, it's going to be, I used to really struggle with building this. And now, I mean, building on a three post RDA is just going to be second nature. I mean, I've been building on the tugboat for years and years now. So this should be nice and fast. And through the magic of video editing, it was really quick. So this is a... Dual 26 gauge, I can't tell how many wraps are on it. It came out to 0.66 ohm, so this would actually be good for like a series box. And I would use it on the Noisy Cricket, but the protruding 510 pin on the IGO W5 is basically non-existent. This is from a time when that didn't matter because everything had 510 connections. There were no hybrids, so I got it uh, on the on the uh, decimus here 62 watts 6.2 volts 0.64 ohms it's i mean it's a good little uh it's a good little canthal build there so let me wick this juice this then we're gonna get back out to normal view and we will vape it i got it all whipped <laughs> I got it all wicked up and I guarantee you that this build that I have on here right now is the best build that's ever been on this RDA. I went back and watched a little bit of my old review for the IGO W5 crest cap and god, that was just cringe-worthy to sit through, man. I don't know how you how and I don't know how anybody watched my videos back in the day. Honestly, I don't know how anybody watches my videos now. Nothing's really changed, but man, those builds I was putting on this IGO W5, it was like, what do you, why, that just looks like a terrible build, but Canthal, boom, it's rocking and rolling. Uh, what juice did I just put on here? I just grabbed a bottle. Oh, this is dude juice. I wanted to try this Sky because it sounds very interesting. It's like a blueberry mint muffin thing. It's something. It's weird. Now, what's going to make this crest cap a hundred thousand times better is if one of my Petri Dot Mod drip tips fits in here. Oh, it fits in there fucking perfect. Oh, that just made me so happy. I am so happy right now. I'm going to use this. I don't even care. Call the cops. I'm going to use this. I got the airflow holes lined up. Let's see how it vapes. 62 watts, 0.64 ohms, 6.2 volts. That's the highest that this has ever been as far as wattage and voltage wise. This is probably the best build that this atomizer has ever seen. I'm interested to try this juice. Let's see if the magic is still there. Let's see if it's as good as I remember. Still, still a good little performer. Now, I was getting a slight whistle there. And I remember I used to think back in the day, I mean, back in 2014, which isn't really that long ago, that this airflow was just ridiculous. I'm like, bro, this airflow is so huge. It's so crazy. Now, comparing it even to like the Twisted Messes RDA, oh, that is so much more open. And this Sub-Zero RDA, I might as well just be breathing through that. But this has a tight little airflow. It's got a tight airflow. This juice, squid dude, is really weird. I don't know what to make of it. I, my, there's too much going on in my brain right now to try to like wrap my head around blueberry muffin with mint in it.
it still works. It still works great. And best of all, my dot mod drip tips that I love oh so much, they just fit in there so nicely. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with this. If someone can track down a Igo W5 with a crest cap, it's a damn good vape. You're not going to be able to fit crazy builds in here. I mean, this is an RDA from a different time. This isn't Clapton's. This is pre-Clapton RDA's. This is pre-building. This is like round wire wraps and then you hope that your 26 gauge can fit through the center post when there's two wires because it's a really tight fit type of RDA. But I got a 26 gauge build in there. It's all nice and wicked up. It's just rocking out vapor, which is great. I'm really enjoying this. And it's a little bit mellower of a vape, which is interesting. It's interesting the way that airflow changes your vape. It's good. It is, uh, it is cloudy and good. I'm going to leave this on here and I'm going to be vaping some dude juice. Maybe this dude juice pairs well with beer. No, not at all. That that was a terrible pairing. Probably the worst pairing I've ever done. But Vapor Hub has the iGo W5 dripper in stock right now. 20 bucks. Not sure where you can get a crest cap. If anybody knows other top caps that fit on it, it says it's a 22 millimeter RDA, right? So I don't know. Let's try the Twisted Messes cap. Does it fit on there? Kind of. Holy crap. The Twisted Messes kind of fits on there. And I don't have the airflow holes lined up. Oh yeah, I do. Look at that. Twisted Messes fits on there. Wow. That is like... That is such a difference. Oh my gosh, that airflow. Crazy. This thing is blowing my mind right now. These old drippers. I'm going to make it a point to go back and find as many older drippers as I possibly can. Like in the days before Clapton coils when all you did was 26 or 24 gauge round wire. There was We didn't use 22 gauge back then. No, no, no. We used... I was using 28 gauge back then, but I'm always a little bit, I try to be as close to the, you know, the trend as I possibly can be, but I'm always like, bah, a couple months behind it, I guess, or maybe not even a couple months, maybe a month behind it, which in the vape world might as well be a couple months. Thank you. Everybody loves to use their horn. It reminds me of that Mitch Hedberg bit where, um, if they put a limit on the number of honks you could use in a month, like you go to honk your horn, but nothing happens, and you think to yourself, damn it, I wish I hadn't seen Ricky on the sidewalk. Like he used all his all his horns. I wish people had a horn limit here in San Diego. I go W5, crest cap, fuck it, I'm vaping it, and this is rad. This is probably one of the best, apart from my K-Fun Mini. This is one of my favorite retro vaping experiences I've uh, I've ever had. Baller. I don't know why I said that. So yeah, I'm going to wrap up this retro vaping segment. Uh, we're going to wrap up this whole vlog. That's it. We're coming to the end here. Uh, I can't, can't end the vlog without doing my favorite uh, comment of the week. Just out of curiosity, has anybody tried this mango creamy soda? I bought it at World Market the other day. It is just delightful. Mmm. I'd also like to mention that Mango Creamy Soda is now a sponsor of the Grim Green What's in the News Robin vlog. You can find this at your local world market. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know why I did that. I don't have any sponsors. That's not a sponsor. I wish Mango Creamy Soda would sponsor me, but they're not going to sponsor me. So what we're going to do instead is get to my favorite comment of the week. There was a couple of them here. Uh, let's do this one because it's really, really long and... This guy just went bananas and yelled at me, Cataclysm23. I'm not editing your name out uh, because you like Cataclysm, and I don't like Cataclysm, the band. Anybody, this was posted on my blue eSig review, which the meaning of that does get lost on people sometimes, but I, I get why it gets lost a little bit. Anyway, 
This guy writes and says, anybody that vapes just because it's trendy or think they're cool, spelled incorrectly, or uh, think they're cool or a faggot, hipster, tryhard, wannabe, social degenerate nerd. Now that, that is a freaking mouthful of an insult. Faggot, hipster, tryhard, wannabe, social degenerate nerd needs some serious counseling. And then he goes, all uppercase, so you know he's serious. The only reason anyone should be using an electronic cigarette or whatever you hipster, bum-munching, gay cunts want to call them is to actually try to quit smoking cigarettes, period. If you're vaping without nicotine liquid just to think you're being cool, you should really evaluate your pathetic existence because that's like masturbating with a condom on, okay, fuckface? Hey, Cataclysm, I masturbate with a condom on. What's it to you? This guy really went bananas. Um, Just something for everybody to keep in mind. Um, Evidently, Cataclysm23 has voted himself as judge, jury, and executioner of the vape world. So if you're going to vape without nicotine, um, you better check with Cataclysm23 because he's going to have some words for you, you faggot, hipster, tryhard, wannabe, social degenerate nerd. Why? Wow. That, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. It's kind of an amazing insult. I would leave out the faggot. I wouldn't call people a faggot. I would say hipster, tryhard, wannabe, social degenerate nerd. And then he said bum munching gay cunts want to call what, 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 whatever you hipster bum munching gay cunts want to call them. That's ridiculous. Don't You don't have to do that, Cataclysm 23. Let's just pump the brakes a little bit. Have you ever thought about the fact that people have weaned themselves down to zero nicotine juice and they're vaping simply so they don't go back to smoking, but they're not dependent on nicotine anymore? That's an option for a lot of people. And you, Cataclysm 23... Well, you can eat a bag of dicks. Had another great comment of the week uh, from a guy named Tyler who just simply wrote, you seem like a douche. <laughs> I, guess, I guess. I guess. Do I seem like a douche? Be honest. Give me some tough love here. I don't think so, but some people, hey, you seem like a douche. Tyler, you seem like an idiot. I'm basing that on as much information uh, I have of you as you have of me. So this last comment of the week, it well, it's not so much a comment of the week. I just thought this exchange was so funny. It made me literally laugh out loud. Sir Marsh writes, hey, Grim Gren, I love your videos. <laughs> right? Doesn't end there. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> And then Ohm Sweet Ohm wrote, so many letters missing. So many letters. <laughs> it keeps going. It gets better. And then Sir Marsh wrote back, but Donald Duck for president in 2016. <laughs> okay. And then finally, the, the coup de gras, the best wrap up to this little exchange. Ohm Sweet Ohm wrote, would you like to make a baby with me on Wednesday? <laughs> I don't know if that's from something and I don't know if these guys know each other and they're just doing like a bit or something but that <laughs> that was the highlight of my week that cracked me up I'm reading this and I'm like you love your videos missing so many letters duck for president would you like to make a baby with me on Wednesday I have no idea hashtag would you like to make a baby with me on Wednesday I don't know, Ohm Sweet Home. Uh, Let me know if he ever takes you up on that offer to make a baby on Wednesday. But yeah, that's what I got. I'm going to wrap up this vlog here. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me, everybody. Don't forget, I have a weekly review schedule, Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wild Card Wednesday. Every week, three reviews every week. It happens. It just happens. It's going to be a lot of uh, regulated mods, a lot of tanks, a lot of drippers, a lot of mech mods, because that's what vaping is, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this crown or crown crest cap on my iGo W5. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to clean up and enjoy my beer. And uh, I also got a new logo uh, real quick before I let you guys go. I got a new logo. I'm working on a new 
logo, okay? I want this to be my new logo. I want to put it on t-shirts. I want to rock it all over the place. I'm going to throw it in the intro of my videos. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to post a link to it in the description as well as show it to you. Just let me know what you think. Good, bad. I think it looks, I think it turned out really cool and I'm going to use it. And let me know if you would like it on a t-shirt because I'm going to fucking put it on a t-shirt regardless of what anybody thinks. I'm still going to use it as my logo. I just wanted to get some feedback, you know, from from people. I think it reflects the Grim Green brand pretty well. But uh, but yeah, that's what I got. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And as always, yeehaw, let's keep on vaping.